Hello everybody, it's the uh, 1st of June and time I did a little bit of work on this Imperial Alder which has been growing away really nicely uh, and the grafts, well I don't say the grafts are taking but the trees that I'm trying to graft as roots are growing away really nicely too so well, that's a bonus. Um, I'm going to take this shoot off that's here, growing out of the trunk directly at the front of the tree, so that's no good. And then I'm just going to give it a bit of a trim all over. Just to encourage some ramification here. Obviously I'm going to leave those grafted portions alone. I'm going to make this one of those timey-wimey videos um, so we'll check in with this a number of times throughout the year over the course of this video no idea when it will be out but as I say it's the 1st of June today so normal procedure stuff that's crossing stuff that's going directly upwards um, pieces that are just generally a little bit annoying or in the wrong place uh, cutting back one or two buds and uh, just keeping it nice and tidy promoting that ramification You can really see well the absolute gorgeousness of these leaves. Um, much different to the common alder, and uh, yeah, makes a nice little tree. I feel they are very thirsty. Um, this one, which has a slightly larger uh, drip tray, has been fine since I last watered it. This other one, as you can see, has started to wilt already it was watered last night and it's now um quarter past two and it is one of the hottest days it's supposed to be about 26 degrees today so they were saying on the news i don't have a thermometer here in the garden but yeah definitely keep your eye on trees if they're going to wilt hopefully by the time you see this that won't be an issue because we'll be into cooler temperatures of autumn or maybe even winter but yes yeah, so there's a quick 360 of that one and then I'm going to do exactly the same to this one um, give it a good drink fill up that water tray and uh, it should recover quite nicely I may need to find this one a slightly less sunny spot um, as it doesn't have quite the same reservoir either in terms of size of compost or drip tray but there we go all these pieces I might just uh, trim them up and put them in a pot of water and uh, see if they root they have two chances right take that leaf off as well um, they may or may not if they don't no loss if they do another tree it's uh, time I did something with this imperial alder again um, a bit of weed growing right under that root. Let's see if I can pull that out. Uh, they always grow in the most awkward places where you don't want them to be. There we go. Let's get rid of that. Or at least the most of it. It'll grow back and it will probably continue to 
grow back um, until I repot this tree again and get all the root out. But there you go. Just uh, something deposited by a bird, possibly, but it's a bit of a nuisance, but not not too terrible. So, what am I doing? This tree is continuing to shoot out and uh, putting out these long growths. So I'm just going to give it a haircut, excluding, of course, the um, pieces that I'm trying to graft as roots, which I'm just going to leave to grow. That piece has grown up through the tree, and uh, if I'm not careful, I will chop it, which I don't want to do because I want it to keep growing, thicken, um, and thicken into that trunk and fuse. So, well, let's just start trimming back these other pieces. But hopefully this tree will keep pushing out new growth and we'll get that ramification that we all want in our trees. Okay, I think that's enough for this one. This one hasn't responded uh, quite as vigorously, but it has responded well. Um, again, just a quick chop back. close enough for government work. Um, I am going to take out this branch that's growing under this one. I don't know how I didn't notice it before. So get that and what I've just noticed on this tree is a bit of scale insect which is possibly why the tree isn't responding as vigorously as t'other. If you're wondering what scale insect is and what it looks like, um, hopefully you can see this strange little bump by my finger, or thumb ra nail rather, and this is, it kind of grows a scale, hence the term. The insect lays a scale under which it lays its eggs and then they hatch um, and they basically feed on the sap underneath so they're quite difficult to get rid of with sprays and things because they're hidden under these little scales but they can be just picked off in that way um, or you can use something like a systemic insecticide if you prefer which goes into the plant sap and poisons them that way I prefer to pick them off if I can, so I don't like using chemicals, and that seems to be the extent of the infestation on this tree, but it does mean I'll have to keep an extra lookout on other trees for them. Okay, put that back on the bench. the 26th of July and uh, looking at the Royal Alder here it's really filling out nicely. I have been pinching the growing tips out on all but the three trees that are hopefully going to make the new roots for the new Navari that I'm trying to graft in down the bottom here which I've allowed to grow freely but I am pinching out regularly the growing tips on the rest and it is really bushing out quite nicely and uh, well beginning to look like a small tree as opposed to a strange looking bush thing 
a quick 360 on that one. That's really enjoying, I think, getting the extra water in this deeper pot uh, and the water tray underneath that it sits in, which I've been keeping topped up with water. Having said that, the smaller one of the two, um, which hasn't required anywhere near as much pinching because it hasn't um, it hasn't been anywhere near as vigorous so um, I am now just taking out some of these growing tips just to promote a little bit more bushiness as it is now beginning to extend but it hasn't hasn't grown with the oomph of the larger one but maybe it just needs a little bit of growing up maybe it's a little bit too juvenile I don't know I'm still really liking the shape although I'm not generally speaking a big fan of the sort of run-of-the-mill s-shaped bonsai this coupled with the elegant foliage seems to work okay so this imperial alder is growing really well um, much better than the smaller one of the two, which I'm going to leave videoing for this portion of video. The three trees that I'm trying to graft in as roots are growing really well, um, so I'm hoping that will be a success. But in the meantime, I'm having to do some regular chopping of the growth because it keeps throwing out new growths which is good I'm not complaining um, just going to keep pinching back these long growths to try and keep encouraging it to bush out even more I keep this water tray in the bottom here full at all times um, and that really helps these alders because they are constantly thirsty and as you can see if I lift it up the tree has already thrown some roots down into the pot or out of the pot into the saucer to drink up that extra moisture which of course is helping with the growth You can see in comparison to some of my trees, this has had plenty of room on the bench because it's just pushing out in all directions and is not in any way, shape or form two-dimensional, of which I'm really pleased. And I just, you know, I know I've said it before, but I just love the form of the leaf. It's just elegant. Will these roots, will these trees ever become roots? Let's have a little look in a bit closer. Hopefully there's a good chance that uh, the trees will graft in place in the next year or this year, but certainly next year, if not this year, um, at which point they can be chopped here, here and here, and I'll have three new roots, um, which will give the tree a lot better look and a lot better balance. It's the middle of October, in fact it's the uh, 17th, so just past the middle, and this uh, wonderful cut leaf royal alder is uh, still growing, still very green, still very healthy. A uh, couple of leaves have suffered possibly from a bit of dryness, but other than that the tree is looking really healthy, or the trees I should say. The trees that I have grafted or I'm attempting to graft have grown really really well as evidenced by this one and this one and all this growth as well I don't want to cut them back but what I have noticed this morning and I probably should have noticed sooner but you can only deal with something when you see it we don't have a time machine unfortunately is that the wire that I put 
around the tree is actually cutting in fairly significantly. Now I'm going to cut it because I don't want to leave it any longer. I may not have to cut it, but I certainly want to remove it. Let's see if I can't give you a, a better close-up. <coughs> yeah, so the wire has cut in fairly significantly, unfortunately. Um, and the grafted trees do appear to have grafted in nicely. And I've actually put in, put out some roots uh, above that piece of wire down into the soil. At least they have on that side. And I don't know how well you can see, but we have some dinky little toadstools. Like little bonsai toadstools coming up. Now that could be a sign that uh, we have a little bit of dead wood or dead material that it's feeding on in the soil. Um, but as this soil is always wet because of it basically being an elder, that's not a huge surprise. Um, let me bring you round. I should, I hope, just be able to untwist this wire. You can see where the tree is calloused over the top of the wire there. Uh, the grafted tree that is. And then hopefully I can just peel it out. Um, but I may need to use the pliers for that. Yeah, that's loosened it. And if I can just, hopefully, peel it round. It may be that I'm going to have to cut it off and leave it in situ and allow the tree to grow over it. Which I think, given the rate of growth on this particular tree, Will only take a season or so. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Right, if I can just. This part is almost calloused over it anyway. I don't think I'm going to manage that without doing excessive damage, so I think the least destructive um, damaging option is going to be to leave that piece of wire in place. It's uh, aluminium wire, it shouldn't react with the tree, and hopefully the tree will just close up over it, um, and within a season or so, we won't even know it's there. I won't even know it's there. It's the uh, fifth Yes, the 5th of December today, and uh, well, this alder did not really give me any gorgeous um, autumn colour, although it's still holding on to a few green leaves. For the most part, um, they've shriveled and just fallen off. What I have got is some rather nice little bonsai toadstools, some mushrooms at the um, base. Let's have a look at those. You'd need a lot of those to make a mushroom omelette with, wouldn't you? Of course, I'm not suggesting that uh, you would want to eat those. I'm sure they probably wouldn't do you any good. They're probably not edible, but they do look kind of nice. So I'm going to leave them in situ. I'm still um, fiddling with the settings on this microphone, so I hope they sound a little bit better today. Um, but there you go. Uh, at least you can hear me, I hope. So, first thing I'm going to do is I just want to do a little bit of setup on this for the next spring. And uh, these grafted in trees, I think I'm going to cut back almost all the way, but not quite. I'm going to leave a little buffer um, in case the weather is particularly bad. 
So um, there we go for good or ill, then coming off like so. Um, they have definitely grafted and taken to the main body. Um, these two roots that came over the edge of the wire, mm, I'm not sure they're still alive, but that's fine because the rest of the tree is, and I will remove that um, once I'm sure the tree is growing away strongly in the spring. I'm going to remove this piece that's growing directly out of the front of the trunk, and those buds that are popped out all over the shop um, in places where I'm not going to want them. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, there are a couple of pieces of wire which are not cutting in, so I'm going to leave them for now. The tree is not going to be doing any more growing this spring. Uh, until spring, what am I saying? I'm not going to do any more growing until spring. Um, so those pieces of wire aren't in any danger of cutting in. Some people worry about the metal conducting the frost or freezing air into the wood. Um, I've not really experienced that myself. But as they say, we're down here in the southwest of the UK. Um, and my garden is relatively sheltered, so we don't cop it as badly as some other people. So um, if you think you're going to have a lot of frost, you've got a lot of wire on your trees, you might want to think about it. But I know a lot of people also will wire a deciduous tree over winter. There's a couple of branches here. This side is much more developed than that side, which is um, something I'd like to rectify, but I've also got a lot of crossing branches. So I'm going to take out those at this point, whilst I can see what I'm doing. Um, shorten a few back. That one's going straight up, cut it back. I don't want to do too much, but uh, that particular branch is sticking straight up, quite ugly. So we'll get rid of that. And that one's going back in towards the trunk, etc. That was a very straight piece. If it offends your eye, plug it out. What's that saying? Um, Piecing back there, crossing over. So there you have it. Um, Turntable seized completely today, so we'll just do it by hand. A quick 360 of the tree. And that's where we'll end this video. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Do really appreciate it. Do the YouTube, like, subscribe, comment things. And uh, most of all, please, please, please do look after yourselves, especially at the moment. Stay safe, everybody.